Ladies and gentlemen, in the ShredGamingTech.com video, it's the first of a new year, and we have some good deals on Steam. Nothing particularly amazing, but kind of recycles of previous deals, if I'm honest. There's a couple of good deals and a couple of okay ones. I'm going to start out with probably the most obvious one, the Torchlight uh, franchise bundle thing. You can get 75% off Torchlight 1 and 50% off Torchlight 2. In my personal opinion, I don't really see a reason to go with Torchlight 1 unless you just want the story of both, in which case knock yourself out. Unlike, say, Diablo, you're quite able to play this by yourself to quite a good degree, and indeed you don't actually need an online account to do so. So, um, Torchlight 2, we've just given away actually two copies of it on the channel, uh, don't forget, by the way, we are running a competition at the moment to give away Dishonored among with other games, so make sure you check out the channel for that. Anyway, um, Torchlight 2 is a very good title indeed. I had some issues, predominantly with the classes. Um, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the classes. I wish there was one, maybe two more, overall, but I did like the game quite substantially. Um, I know there's debate among many of you of which is better out of Torchlight and Diablo, I'm not even touching it, but in my mind both are great games um, and I'd recommend checking out Torchlight 2 for the price, uh, which is $7.49, it's not too bad at all actually. Um, it does have a few issues here and there, but it has a demo available, um, which is nice for this type of game actually. So I'd recommend you check out the demo and see what your thoughts are on this, I personally quite like it. Anyway, um, next one is Transformers Franchise. There's actually quite a few of them. Fall of Cybertron being the most recent, and War of Cybertron being a couple of years older, but um, still a reasonably good game. And there's also some DLC available for this as well. Uh, this was covered, much like Torchlight 2 on RGT. Um, Amata actually played this one, and she said it's pretty good, and she's not that much into Transformers. In fact, she doesn't really like the movies. This, I can't really say much more other than the fact that it's rated fairly well, and as I said, Amata did like it, and it's into action and that type of thing. To say that she liked it and she's not into Transformers is a good indication that it's a title worth pursuing whether you're into the series or not. It looks quite cool and graphically nice, so check out the video if you want more on that particular series. Next one, War of the Roses. I can honestly tell you that this is one of those titles I wasn't really interested in that much. Um, it scores okay on Metacritic and other websites, and 50% off for twelve forty nine. I suppose you could do far worse in terms of deals. I just personally would never swayed by it. It's m m uh, multiplayer focused. And to be honest with you, I've got so many other multiplayer games, I just never really found the will to buy it. Nevertheless, maybe you will. I I'm kind of have mixed feelings about the graphics and overall stylings of the game. The problem is there's just so many medieval titles. Um, and this one just didn't really do it for me. As I said, it scores okay in Metacritic and so on. And it's a team-based third-person action game set in at the 15th century England. I'm not sure. Um, as I've said, I've had mixed feelings about it. Whether you want to go ahead with it, up to you. The Total War series. You can actually pick up the Grand Master Collection, which includes, and I quote, 20, uh, over 20 items, including Empire Total War, Total War Elite Units, blah, blah, blah. There's so many titles, I'm not going to list them all, actually. I'll be here until the cows proverbially come home. But some of them are older, like 2007, for example, and others of them are like, released 2012, so last year now, technically. That uh, Total War, of course, is a very, very, very critically acclaimed franchise. And for those of you who like to must up ridiculously huge armies and battles of death, this is going to be the one for you. I realise there are other games that are kind of similar to this and everyone's got their own personal preference. I can honestly say I haven't actually tried a Total War because, well, it's just not really appealed to me. But for those who have tried it, like I know personally, they've loved the title. Um, and so, I can honestly say, 
while it's not my thing, a lot of people do love it, and it can be one of those games where it's very, very addictive. It does look pretty awesome as well, I must say. And it's also one of those titles that's kind of, you know, PC defining, if you will. Um, so, yeah. Next one, Max Payne Franchise. You got Max Payne 1 and 2 available for a rather princely sum, £2.49, so pretty much free in other words, and Max Payne 3 available for £7.49. Onwards to the two older games, um, there's nothing particularly wrong with them, both games are pretty awesome. Max Payne 1 in particular added the concept of bullet time to, um, well, video games, and it actually did it fairly well. It can have a bit of a mixed bag, uh, and this is the same for Max Payne 3 as well, in that you can kind of look like a, a complete twit if you mistime a jump and your bullets just go everywhere other than the bad guy and then you smack into a chair as you're jumping, but generally speaking it works really well and I quite like it. Max Payne 3 on the other hand runs really well on PC and does look quite aesthetically pretty. I have covered this in an RGT video, so I'd recommend you check it out. It's one of our older ones, actually. That isn't to say that Max Payne 3 is flawless. There are some issues, predominantly with the way Max Payne is portrayed, in that he doesn't ever seem to feel like the sunshine and lollipops. In other words, it's a very dark, kind of gritty game. And that can get a little bit... Well, I wouldn't say oppressive but I'd feel I'd say kind of like you know it's not going to be a happy game and that can get kind of get a bit boring after a while it's like even though at the very start of the game he has this almost champagne lifestyle uh, he's still oh my god what have I done kind of tortured soul and that can get a little bit old uh, but yeah other than that it's a good game I, I really like it uh, graphically, as I said, it's good. Writing, good, other than a bit cliche, as I said, with the whole tortured soul. What I always seem to fuck things up, and, you know, my life will never ever seem to be the same again, kind of. But, other than the angst, it's a very good game, and I personally would say that it's nowhere near enough to ruin your enjoyment of the game overall. Um... In terms of the actual gameplay, it works really well. Obviously, most evolving bullet time and everything else. Cover systems uh work fairly well actually for the most part and bullet time is implemented really beautifully i really like max Payne 3 and i would encourage you to pick it up for the price it's not too bad there's also various pieces of dlc um they're mostly for multiplayer as far as i understand and to be honest with you a title like this just like say uncharted series on the playstation i know it's multiplayer on for example uncharted 2 and 3 but i've never touched it you know i buy the game i play the the single player, and that's all I care about. I just care about the storyline for titles like this. And while some people may, um, and that's a bit strange, or like I'm not getting the full enjoyment out of the title, you know, I buy games like Call of Duty or Counter Strike for the multiplayer aspect, but that's just me. Uh, anyway, Awesome Noughts. This is another title that I can say I haven't played, however, um, it is a fairly interesting game. I think it can be described as League of Legends in a side-scrolling kind of way. It's scored fairly well, Metacritic wise, and this seems to be another one of those deals that just seems to constantly be on um, sale. It literally seems to always be on sale, I don't know why on the Steam sale. There are a couple that just seem to never stop, and this is one of them. That and War of the Roses. Total War I've seen a couple of times, Max Payne I think I've seen once on a Flash deal. Transform. Actually, I think every one of these on today, coming to think of it, has been on either a flash deal or a previous day. I'm almost positive. I'm willing to bet money that pretty much every one of them has been. Uh, Dead Island is available on Community Choice. I've mentioned before that I quite like this game. It didn't live up to the hype of the trailer. You know which one I'm referring to, right? About the little girl. Um, I don't really need to say much more. It didn't quite live up to that, but it does give you a really, really, really pretty island sandbox to play about in. And it's got zombies, and who doesn't want to bash a zombie occasionally? Rage is available. Uh, it's got a while yet, almost 10 hours, well, at the time of recording. Rage is a very good game. It had some issues on release, mostly thanks to its software holding your hand and saying, 
There, there, it's okay. We know that graphic settings on your PC are complicated. We'll just take those out of your hands for you. No id software. That's a bad id software. And we smacked them on the nose with a, verb, with a proverbial rolled up newspaper and they fixed it. Sort of. It still has some issues in that it's still nowhere near as customization uh, friendly as other id software titles. For example, Dooms and Quakes and so forth. But hey, at least we've got some options other than resolution now. So, you know, we should be thankful for small mercies, right? In a serious note, I really like the game. It's not flawless by any stretch of the imagination. But it works quite well, honestly, and I, I really like the game, um, especially thanks to the patches. I haven't tried out the DLC. It is worth noting that there is nothing off the DLC, so not even one percent. Nada, zilch, nada. So yeah, um, I'm not really surprised. The DLC's ages recently been released and fairly cheap anyway, so I don't suppose they want to kind of blow any profits they can potentially make from the people who've bought the game. Towns is also available um, on this particular deal, and there's actually a demo of it which would probably explain the game a lot better than I could. I can honestly tell you that I haven't really read much about this one. It looks kind of like a strategy RPG affair. Uh, it's kind of genre defying, at least according to Steam's own description. I have heard there's some bugs with it, but whether they've been fixed or not, I'm not sure. As I've said, it's about 50% off or £5, which isn't a bad deal at all. But do check out the demo first, as I said, and do some checking to see if there are any bugs. I have heard there are, but I haven't met anyone who's personally played it, so it's a bit difficult. It's only kind of hearsay on my part. Uh, but even hearsay, I like to inform you guys simply because, hey, you can at least do some Googling. If it turns out that I heard wrong or, you know, whatever, great. If it's true then you know what, you can figure out whether that would bug you or not, right? But Anyway, Crisis Collection. Well, Far Cry 3's just been on sale, so it's not that much of a shock that we're also seeing the Far Cry, as I Crisis. Far Cry 3, um, or Far Cry 1, was kind of the start of the universe, the sandbox kind of titles, and Crisis is, I suppose, could almost be described as very... I wouldn't want to call it a spiritual successor to Far Cry because that's very much the wrong word. But in terms of graphics and so on, they could be kind of comparable. The only problem with Far Cry, with uh, Crisis, I'm sorry, is particularly the early Crisis, the transition between the suit powers. Um, as as you know, you are basically in what is pretty much an alien suit. And your suit could do many different things, including your speed, increase your speed, increase your strength, which allows you to jump further and throw enemies higher and do better melee. Increase your armor, which basically reduces the damage that you take as you're being shot. Genius, right? And finally, go invisible. My concern is that, particularly in Crisis One, the transition between those powers is not easy. It's actually a pain in the ass. Um, and you basically have to do it mostly via middle clicking and kind of moving the mouse. Uh, you can't just swap between them. Um, and there might be a mod for that, but regardless. Anyway, later Crisis, was particularly 2, did fix this somewhat. I really like Crisis. It does have a bit of a cliche pot plot in some areas. You know, aliens invade and so on, but it does work really well. The action's pretty awesome. I know it does have multiplayer, but once again, this is one of those titles where I don't... I haven't touched the multiplayer aspect of it, if I'm honest. The single player, however, I really like. Um, Warhead could almost be described by some as not a full title. You know, it was kind of like a 1.5, and some people, particularly on release, didn't give it a full credit of a proper game. I don't know why that was. I know it sounds absurd, but particularly on forums... That's not really the case, and it's actually a really good game, and I actually enjoyed Crisis Warhead maybe actually slightly more in some aspects than the original Crisis. Crisis 2, it does urban areas quite well. There was actually a patch that was released, as you guys might know, which drastically improved the texture quality, and I do mean quite drastically from the original. Um, it improved the textures well beyond that of the consoles well well beyond i will also say as well that despite the fact that crisis 2 looking amazing it actually runs a little bit better than the original crisis that's just as an aside um 
So yeah, I actually would recommend picking up Crisis too. Uh, I quite like all the collection though. It's a pretty good deal. Uh, 9.99 for all of them. Where you can pick up individual packs for 75% off, or you can save all of 73 pence. So I don't know what you guys, you know, are planning to do with that huge saving, but regardless, you can do so, and you could buy something with that. I'm sure if you buy the whole pack. There's not that many great deals on other websites. I've had a quick brief check for you guys. Um, on Gamers Gate, you've got Dead Space Collection and a few others for fairly reasonable prices. It's also worth noting you've got the Hitman Collection for three pounds seventy-five. Of course, that does not include Absolution before anyone jumps up and down in proverbial glee. But it does include Silent Assassin, Blood Money, which is f supposedly the best out of all of them, and code name 47. So it's not too bad at all. It's not, you know, awful. And they've also got Risen 2 Dark Waters, which I've covered in another video. <sighs> oh, also, it's also got Batman Arkham City. Uh, game of the Year edition for four and ninety eight, which isn't too bad. Five bucks, it's not too bad. It's about Steam price. Um, as I was mentioning, we've also got Risen Two Dark Waters for seven pounds fifty, basically. Hmm. I would recommend you check out the RGT video. It's one of our really old ones, but still, Risen Two isn't terrible. If I had to create a criticism specifically aimed at the game, it would be the combat. In my opinion, the combat on the game is really iffy, and also the way you level up your character is a bit dodgy as well. It's not, it doesn't feel intuitive, mostly because you have to buy skills all the time, and even to learn something like kick. I mean, I don't know about you, but in combat, if I was a pirate, kicking would be kind of a standard thing, kind of like walking. I mean, you know, kicking your opponent away would just be an obvious thing. I I can use a sword, so I'm pretty sure I can figure out how to kick someone. Nevertheless, you have to learn the skill. It's not a terrible game. It looks reasonable graphically, but there's not that much variety between areas in some cases. In terms of the storyline, it's not very particularly bad. It's just, you know, nothing particularly original either. On the other hand, it is pirates. And... Unlike Zombies, for example, you know, not that I'm going down on zombie games, I quite like zombie games for the most part, hey, they're fun, but there's not exactly a great many pirate games out there, so hey, you can say you're a pirate, you're not exactly, you know, Blackbeard here, you know you're a good pirate for the most part, but hey, at least you're a pirate, at least you could say for a few minutes you're a pirate. As I said, it's not a terrible game, it doesn't look too bad, uh, but it just, I don't know, it's just... Something's missing on it for me to say it's an amazing game. The combat, I think, is probably the biggest issue combined with the leveling system. But yeah, it's not terrible. I've played a lot worse. Anyway, I think that just about does it for today's little look at the games on sale. There's not a particularly great um, box of joy for us today, unfortunately. It seems like we're getting the bar humbug deals, mostly. So yeah, um, Steam deals are going to be on for a couple more days, if I'm not mistaken. I think it finishes the 5th. Yeah, January the 5th. I have no doubt that the 5th is probably going to be a best of collection if they keep up with their fine tradition. Anyway, regardless, I think I've rabbited on enough. Hopefully you guys have uh, at least got one or two ideas of what you don't want to buy and what you do want to buy. As a quick brief summary, if I had to choose and you don't own any of those games, I'd recommend Torchlight to Max Payne 3 and possibly Transformers if you're into an action game. Those are definitely the best three in my opinion. Awesome Lots isn't bad, but you know, not really into, not really my thing. So anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. I will see you soon. Bye for now.